Hey, this is Chris Wells, the Bass Chap, and I'm so excited that you've decided to join me in this video series called The Next Steps, or What Happens Next After You Prayed to Receive Christ. Now, maybe you trusted Christ at a wild game banquet that I spoke at, or maybe a sportsman's dinner or something like that, or maybe a pastor just said, hey, you need to come and check out this video. Regardless of why you're here, I am so glad that you're here. And let me tell you, if you trusted Christ in your life, you've made the greatest decision that you will ever make in all of eternity and that cannot be understated and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to invite you to join me for the next several days where we sit down and we talk about what are the next steps that you need to take in order to begin to live the christian life to its absolute fullest there's some critical things that we're going to be talking about it it's going to be about five to ten minutes a day and we're going to sit down and we're going to have some time with god and we're going to learn what are the next steps that you need to take? So let's go to God in prayer. Father, we just pray right now that you would just bless this time. I thank you for the decision that these people have made. I pray, God, that you would produce fruit in their lives as they begin to spend time with you. God, we love you, and we give this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, there's a couple of things that I'm going to talk to you about today, and there's going to be some things that you're going to need throughout this process. And the first thing you're going to need is a Bible, okay? I've got my Bible here, and I'm going to invite you to get one. Now, listen, throughout the course of this video series, if you need to stop and pause the video and go grab your Bible, or listen, if you don't have a Bible in your life, you can go to chriswells.org, shoot me an email, and I will send you a Bible. It's the most important book that you'll ever have in your entire life. And so we're going to be talking about the importance of that. But today, there are going to be two things in our time with God today that we want to look at the first thing is, what has happened to you? What has gone on? What has changed from the time you trusted Christ at a game bank or wherever it is you trusted Christ? What has happened to you? And the second thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about taking some time to reflect and on the mountaintop experience that you've had. So number one, what has happened to you? Now let me read you a verse of scripture. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Now, if you need to take some time, pause the video and get down to it. I'm going to read you this one verse of scripture, and it simply says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and look, new things have come. The Bible says that when you pray to receive Christ, several things have happened to your life. So let's go through that in just a minute. The first thing that happened to you is you heard the Spirit of God speak to your heart. That is the most important conversation that has ever happened in your life. Whether you know it or not, that is the most important thing that's ever happened. Is when the Spirit of God speaks to your heart and convicts you or convinces you that you are in need of a Savior. That you're a sinner in need of a Savior. The Bible says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's no one righteous. No, not one. We all like sheep have gone astray. And the Bible says the Spirit of God convicts us. God has convicted you. In response to that, you did a couple of things. Number one, you turned in repentance. To repent of your sins means this. It means if you're walking towards sin, you stop. And you turn away from your sin and you turn towards God. God is always 180 degrees from sin. And the, the, to repent means it's a change of your mind. It's a change of your heart. It's a change of your direction in life. And you turn towards God and towards his son Jesus as your savior. Okay. The next thing you did is by faith, you trusted what he did for you on the cross to pay for your sins. You trusted what he did, that his death alone pays for your sins. And then, after you trusted what he did, you received him into your life as Lord and Savior of your life. You receive him as your Lord, enabling him to be your Savior. We believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, and he becomes an all-sufficient Savior in our lives. The Bible says it like this. It says you were once an object of wrath for God, that you were separated from God, and in one instance, when Christ came into your life, the Bible says you crossed from death to life. It says that everything, your whole status, you were an object of wrath of God, now you are a child of God. The Bible says this. The Bible says that when you receive Christ in your life, he deposits his spirit inside of you. A deposit that guarantees your inheritance. I don't know about you, but that is some pretty, pretty awesome stuff. That is an awesome deal. Now let me tell you, when this has happened to you, you may feel different, you may not feel different, but your status has changed. You were once an object of wrath, now you're a child of living God. 
and any child, if you're a father of any merit at all, and we have an awesome, worthy father, when your child wants to come and spend time with you, you make time for your child. God wants to spend time with you on a daily basis. You are introduced to him by receiving him in your life, and now it's a process of you growing closer to him, learning to hear his voice, and learning to obey his will in your life. It is awesome. Now let me tell you, let's go to the second part of this. You know what's happened to you now. Now, I want you to take some time today to pray and reflect of all the things that God has done for you. Remember this day. Remember this time when Christ came into your life. It will be a testimony that you will share for the rest of your life and for the rest of eternity. So take a few minutes today and pray through. God, I thank you so much for what you've done for me and what has happened. Help me to remember the things of this day for the rest of my life. Hey, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We're going to meet. And hey, let me tell you right now, I'm on a mountaintop. I'm, I'm at the uh, Big Cedar Lodge in the chapel of the Big Cedar Lodge. Just pretty awesome. I'm going to show you my view. I'm going to turn and show you my view right here. It's really pretty cool. You can see. And let me tell you, receiving Christ is a mountaintop experience. No doubt. It is awesome. But if anybody ever tells you that following Christ is easy, they are lying to you. Here's what God promises. He promises you, I will meet with you. I will never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. Hey, come back tomorrow, and we'll get busy about spending time with God, learning what comes next.